All right, let's move over to Brooklyn. They uh, just wrapped up against the Rockets, actually, a 132-114 win. Uh, I think that's 12 in a row now for Houston that they've lost, if I'm not mistaken. Um, somebody correct me on that in the comments if I'm wrong. But uh, nonetheless, the Nets right now looking like probably the best team out east. They made the deal for James Harden. Uh, he has been tremendous. And I know we, we talked about this last week, last Wednesday. I wasn't here, but Nick and you, Andrew and Ryan, talked about this last week. Are we to the point this season? And, and Nick, I'll start with you on this. And you know, forgive me if I'm being a little redundant here. Are we to the point where this is not championship or bust, but win the East or bust this season for the Nets who now have three superstars in tow. And the only problem for them really at this point seems to be getting all three of them on the floor together. But once they are, they seem to be unstoppable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I said it last week. They're my pick for the finals. No, no questions asked. Um, I think it's championship or bust. Absolutely. I think if they don't win the East, it's, it's a joke, honestly. Um, the, the talent on that team, especially, I mean, I, I, you have three of the best offensive players, not right now of all time on one team together. Uh, they just scored 132 points in a game. Very high. Of course it was against a bad team, but you're right, Jimmy. If they, if they get all three guys on the court consistently, I, I don't think anyone in the league can stop that team. Whether whether or not other teams score, the Nets defense has been has been questionable. But in reality, you win the game of basketball by scoring more points. Defense wins championships, they say, but no one's seen an offense like this. You could argue the Warriors, of course, but it, KD, Kyrie, Harden. I mean, it's just it's absurd. And they got shooters around them, and Joe Harris. You know, it, it's it's just a scary, scary team to face when they're healthy. But the the when they're healthy is more if they're healthy. Um, so I think the only way they don't win, it's 100% championship or bust. Only way they don't win this finals is if they can't get their guys on the court, all three at, at, at once. Um, I just don't think it's possible for anyone to beat them in four out of seven games if they're healthy. So healthy Nets wins a championship. Easy money for me on that one. Yeah, you know they say defense wins championships, but I don't think the 27 Yankees were worrying to go outside and play grounders every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So here, here's, here's my thing is – um, the Nets are also my pick to represent the Eastern Conference in the NBA Finals. If, you know, as we keep saying, if they can, all three of them can be on the court at the same time. We see what they can do. Um, but people tend to worry about it a lot right now when there's still half a season to go. And, you, you know, it, 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 becomes, it becomes the main conversation point when we talk about the Nets and our worries about them. Um, but they're, they've also been able to, not to the same extent, but they have been able to produce when you have two of the three guys on the court at the same time, because that's still two pieces of offensive gold that you have on the court at one time. And you said it, you said it yourself, Nick, to, to have three of not only the best of this era, but the best to have done it offensively on the court at the same time is something. But to have two of them is, it's less, but it's still quite something that other teams will not have. And, you know, we worry about things being healthy. If the Nets continue to produce like they have been, things will eventually fall into place. By the time we hit the playoffs, all three of them will be on the court at the same time. So that, that worry for me is not as prevalent as it is for other people. But uh, perhaps you disagree with me, Jimmy. No, I, I think I agree. And I think this might be a little bit of a hot take, but I, I think the most important piece of it is Harton, to be totally honest. They trade for him midseason. They're 16 and six since they did. And I think the really eye opening thing, at least for some people, is that for a lot of people, they looked at Harden as a scorer. They said, This guy just puts up huge numbers, goes out, he can get you 40 whenever he wants. And what he's shown with the Nets is that that's not just who he is. Like, he has the multitude where he can distribute he is last i checked the leading assist man in the nba this season he can get your rebounds he, he's involved in all aspects of the game and he is the guy i think maybe even more so than durant that they just cannot afford to have him out of the lineup crazy as that sounds and they go out they trade for him and look i've gone back and forth a lot on whether or not they should have traded for harden I, I think ultimately it goes back to what we were talking about with the knicks is that you just need stars to win in the nba and i, I think 
the Nets go out and do that. Congratulations to them. Also, another really weird stat I want to give you guys um, in the last couple minutes here. So if you go back to 2015 NBA Finals that year to now, there have been four different teams to win the championship, four different coaches to win this championship. Steve Kerr has won three. Ty Lue won one with the Cavaliers. Nick Nurse won with the Raptors. And Frank Vogel won in the bubble with the Lakers. All of those first championships were by coaches who were in their first year. See what I'm saying with Steve Nash? So it can happen. And I'm obviously exempting 2017 and 18 with uh, Kerr and, and the Warriors. I'm leaving that out of the conversation. But when, when Steve Nash was brought in, everybody's like, wow, can they win in their first year? Yes, they can. And you can make the argument they should. And I think, I, I just want to say this before we wrap up. I think Steve Nash has done a terrific job. Uh, they have huge personalities in that locker room. Okay, that's no secret. Uh, and he has been able to corral all of those in a very player-friendly way, which is, I think, important in the NBA. And he's just done a terrific job. People have made jokes that, well, he's really only in charge of the vibes, and, and maybe to an extent that's true. But you know what? Managing the vibes when you have guys like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and James Harden, who are outsized personalities, and I'm not even saying that as a criticism. It's just, it's just a fact. But to be able to bring all of that together and manage guys who I'm sure would love to just do their own thing I think deserves a lot of credit. And I think Steve Nash should be getting a lot more of that than maybe he has. That stat is, is absolutely baffling to me. I had no idea. Um, me either, actually. It's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, I guess if I think about it, then yeah, I realized it. But it's, I, yeah, you're, it, it goes to show, you know, it's very possible. And, and why not with this team? Um, and the pieces are absolutely there. I think, yeah, like you said, Jimmy, Steve Nash has done a great job. Um, I think he's, these, this sort of I, it could be a new wave almost coming in of coaches who were once players I know a lot of guys didn't work out like Derek Fisher for the Knicks I know that but Nash is one of the best basketball minds the game has ever seen um especially with had D'Antoni there his old coach from the the Suns teams he played on that were offensive juggernauts themselves uh and those teams didn't even have near nearly the amount of talent that the Nets have right now so <laughs> the pieces are there and more you could say um, I'll repeat it one last time. Nets championship. Uh, basketball, like you were saying, Jimmy, is definitely at least the way it is played today. It's just a, in, an incredibly star-driven sport. Maybe it's just the, the nature of the fact that there's only five guys out there on the court that the big that the stars are going to shine, and it's just how it is. But the Nets have it. There's no denying it. And to have three of them all at one time on the court, it's it's going to be tough to beat, especially when you have to go up against them and have the stamina of a seven game series on your side, it's just going to be hard. Certainly will. And yeah, I want to give Mike D'Antoni, Jacques Vaughn, the assistant coaches, a lot of credit for the nets as well. 